Abandoned railroads. Abandoned mines. Abandoned settlements. LiDAR data let us see through modern vegetation to reveal landforms marked by prior human activity. And here in the Ozarks, so many of the stories they tell are underlain by geologic influences. So today on Ozark Outsider, we'll explore a few examples of humans altering the Ozark landscape using the U.S. Geologic Survey's online national map with the hillshade-stretched LiDAR layer. The Ozarks' rugged terrain was a challenge for railroad builders, who followed river valleys as long as possible but resorted to tunnels when necessary to cross between watersheds. The Charcoal Gap Tunnel near Eureka Springs, Arkansas, was built around 1900 by the St. Louis and Northern Arkansas Railroad. The site's bedrock and soil were quite unstable, and the railroad suffered numerous landslides here, probably accounting for some of the rubble clearly shown by the LIDAR. You can read a great detailed summary of the site's history and geologic context in an article from the Division of Arkansas Heritage, linked below. But this wasn't the only geologically unstable tunnel in the Ozark region. Here at Rocheport, Missouri, along the northern Ozark fringe, the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad tunneled through a protruding bluff along the Missouri River. This is a rare Ozark tunnel you can easily visit, as Missouri's 240-mile cross-state Katy Trail passes through it, and we devoted a two-part video series to the complex geologic context of this site, linked below. Another Ozark Railroad Tunnel might be open to visitors someday. Here at Freeburg, Missouri, the former Rock Island Main Line tunnels beneath the town's ridge on another abandoned route advocates are hoping to convert into Missouri's second long-distance rail trail. A broader LIDAR view clearly shows how the tunnel helps the rail line cross the watershed divide between the Marys and Gascony rivers. How many travelers have driven through Freeburg on US 63, never knowing they were crossing a rail tunnel? Sometimes all a railroad needed to cross a gap was a deep cut, like here along a long abandoned railroad built to serve a major iron furnace in the central Missouri Ozarks. This cut is on public land and makes an interesting short hike. LIDAR helps us follow this line east across private land to its crossing of Hoosa Creek at the old town of Dillard, where the route's sinuous climb back out of the valley is partially followed by modern Highway 49. This is far from the only Ozark Railroad tied up with the region's mining history, so let's go explore some abandoned mines. Here in Missouri's aptly named Iron County, the summit of Pilot Knob is scarred by a large mine dating back before the Civil War. Indeed, this same view highlights a Union fort built to protect the region's strategic mines and railhead, now a historic site commemorating an important battle fought here. Just across the valley, the summit of Shepherd Mountain shows two deep scars cut by early iron miners, which even today contain iron deposits rich enough to deflect a compass, as we showed in a different video. Many parts of Washington County, Missouri, are scarred by extensive pits dug for mining barite, locally known as TIF. Here's a particularly dramatic field of tiff pits scattered across the landscape. Here's another mining district near the aptly named Town of Tiff, along the Washington-St. Francis County line, where a close zoom reveals the traces of abandoned mill foundations near the railroad tracks. Here at Silver Mines Recreation Area in Madison County, Missouri, surface mining yet again left traces of open pits and access roads, but the real story is underground where shafts extended deep into the hillside in search of silver, tungsten, and lead. Many of the spoils were dumped along the hillside above the St. Francis River, which is actually badly shadowed in this view, so let's switch to a different hillshade product for a better result. These tailings still provide interesting prospecting today. Underground mining can leave a much larger scale legacy, as here in Park Hills, Missouri, where one of the world's richest lead deposits produced almost 80% of the nation's lead for over 100 years. Vast amounts of mine tailings accumulated in mounds and catch basins, forever altering the area's landscape, despite the subsequent removal of many large tailings piles like this one. We strongly recommend a visit to Missouri Mines State Historic Site to learn more about this setting. While the towns here survived the end of mining, many didn't. Let's visit some Ozark ghost towns, preserved by faint traces lingering on LIDAR. We already visited the mining scars of Washington County, but let's focus on the town of Palmer, a once vibrant community serving the mining and timber industries. Essentially uninhabited today, a close zoom reveals the orderly traces of a good-sized settlement, now hidden beneath the regrown tree cover. The wonderful Ozark oral historian Alex Prim includes a nice essay on Palmer in his book Ozark Voices. Probably the most famous Ozark mining ghost town is Rush, Arkansas, 
preserved within the Buffalo National River. The hillside scars from mining what was once proclaimed the greatest deposit of zinc ever discovered in the world are obvious, but we can also pick out traces of industrial foundations, and even the town's buildings, laid out in a neat row along a ledge above Rush Creek. While most Ozark ghost towns failed for economic reasons, the story of Times Beach stands out as an environmental disaster. Here along the Merrimack River, on the outskirts of St. Louis, a grid of streets once served a town of around 2,000 people along historic Route 66. But this town wasn't abandoned in the 1800s or the Great Depression. It was completely evacuated in 1983 due to dioxin contamination and remains abandoned today, a complex and heartbreaking story told well by a video we'll link to below. You can visit this site today as part of Route 66 State Park. Let's end with a fun and unusual example of an abandoned human enterprise. This complicated-looking feature in Dent County, Missouri, is an abandoned fish hatchery along the West Fork of Hoosa Creek. From the ground, these don't look like much, emphasizing the value of LIDAR and recognizing landscape patterns. Much of this site is on public land, and it's a fascinating place to explore. There are so many more stories lingering the Ozark landscape. If you'd like to explore for yourself, check out our tutorial video on how to access LIDAR-derived hillshade maps using the National Map Platform shown here. And we'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to all the viewers who've supported our channel, whether by leaving a tip through our Ko-fi site, or hitting the thanks button below the video, or simply liking, sharing, and commenting. We appreciate all of you.